Okay, I'm so much comfortable now. <laughs> okay, so now you can click on this, change it to one. Okay, like what Dr. Young said. This is just a calibrate. Uh, axis, okay, you... Okay, now this is what some students uh, are doing. They, you need to click at the center. Let me move this away. Uh. You need to click at the center and move it. Because students like to click at the side and drag it around. It's actually... When you're doing that, you're actually reorientating the axis uh, orientation because it's meant to be this way, but if you orient it the other way, you find that your x is now this way and your y this way, so it's not what we want. At first second. So the ball is now here, okay, now uh, this is really cutting edge uh, pedagogy. No, not cutting edge technology, uh, cutting edge pedagogy. Where is the particular? <laughs> oh, new, okay, okay, let me see. Yeah. New, okay. Now, it's just not about to show you point mass. So, now what I'm going to do is, we're going to do something called a dynamic particle model. Okay. So, using Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, do not be frightened by all this. Okay, what it means is this if I do not define anything here, uh, if I let the movie run, Okay, I need to do something else. Huh? Uh, let me set the position of the axis by dragging on this little icon. So your mate doesn't work. Huh? Okay, you have to click on this. Okay, you have to click on the click setting. Change this to 11. Okay, so it tells you the beginning of the... Yeah, it doesn't work on the mate. Okay. Uh, because of windows when you drag it, it moves us. Okay, so this is the uh, so it's frame draw. Uh, frame draw. Okay, frame draw. You yeah, always want to press enter because Java has this uh, issue in the field is yellow, doesn't register. Now if you keep play this, you notice that the student's particle model is always stationary. Okay, now how to interpret the meaning? Okay, nothing has changed. Make it zero. Okay. Nothing has changed. X doesn't change, Y doesn't change, velocity, Y velocity doesn't change. So that's why it's a spatial object. Okay. Wonderfully, if the student were to change this value to some number, let's say two. I think I need to pause the video here. Huh? Okay, pause. Okay, change this to two. Okay, and then now you play. Do you notice something wonderful? Okay, the student, which is me in this case, I have actually created a mathematical model, okay, a mathematical expression uh, of what this model should do. It is actually doing velocity in the x direction constant at 2 meters per second. Okay, so you can see that from this process, the student can see, okay, so it doesn't quite add up, you know, because it's not really the shadow. So maybe the number is 1.71. Uh, how I know is because I've done this a couple of times, so it helps to have practice. Okay. So you can see now that it is always the vertical projection. You can see the, the actual particle, and then the, this is projected uh, on the x-axis. Okay. So the student have to keep on thinking. 
Okay, what else do I need to change my model? Okay, this is just, uh, you may realize that the next immediate obvious thing is you need to have a uh, negative, in this case I will use 9.81, okay, rather than negative 10. Okay, negative 9.81, okay, okay. So when the student will play the model, he realizes that he's still not quite right, but he's getting close. Because the model that he has conceptualized is actually this graph, but the actual one is the video overlay. So he has got to keep on testing, improving his model like a real scientist. So if you would like to do it very quickly, the answer here, there must be a vertical velocity. Okay? So let's say it's 2. Uh, okay. Okay, let's say it's 2. Okay. And the student can play again, test out his hypothesis. You see, it's, it's a little bit too much now, so therefore the student realized the number has to be lesser, I think. Is that correct? Lesser. I don't know what's the number, uh, let's say 1.7. Okay, so in a nutshell, uh, without going into the details, because it's not that I don't have to share, but I know all of us uh, would like to be really possible. So I just show you one more fantastic wow moment. Okay. How many other teach here level physics? <laughs> okay. Then I shall go for the wow. Do you okay, do you maybe teach your student today to know air resistance? I think in level is quite uh, words, uh, but how do you uh, represent this in equation? Okay, one thing is if you were to do, you to do a, a, a drag model, uh, so the student can say it's k multiplied by the velocity, correct? So maybe there's a negative sign depending on how you look at it, okay, fair. Okay, so down here, I can do the same thing. You can now tell the student, don't just take my word for it, don't take the internet for it, you know, we are not an expert trying out in real life. So the student probably has taken this video himself, preferably, uh, if not. So uh, what he will do is the student will now define, see ya, uh, define a new variable called k, okay, the coefficient of drag, k enter. Okay. And down here, uh, maybe say the K enter. Maybe say the K for some reason, I do not know what, but let's say 0.3. Okay. Now you subtract this with K multiplied by the velocity in the X direction. Okay. Similarly, negative K multiply by velocity in the y direction. So again, the student needs to understand the concept of components because x and y act independently. And like magic, yeah, without teacher saying so much, the student can observe what he has done. Can you see the effect of that? Okay, maybe the value of k is not ideal. Okay, I should make, I should exaggerate it to a value that doesn't make sense. Let's say it's 1. Okay, and let's see. The impact of that now is a lot uh, more influenced by air resistance now. So uh, this is roughly what we have learned so far uh, the impact of that. They generally like tracker, and we have been going around sharing all this.